Hello makers and welcome to Sheer Stitchery. I'm Katherine Harris and I do sewing and DIY tutorials each week for you. This week I wanted to do a make that I had actually done quite some time ago but I still have some of the old footage on how to make it and that is this dress here and it's the Butterick 6582 vintage 1960s cocktail dress. Now I did do one adjustment in it and I actually decided to do an exposed zipper as opposed to a lapped zipper just to make it a little bit more modern. But you know, if you are a longtime subscriber of mine, how much I love vintage patterns and vintage styles. So let's get to that tutorial. So making a muslin mock-up was the first thing that I decided to do with this dress because from my experience with the big four patterns, butterics don't fit me very well. So I had to make some adjustments to the muslin. So after I made up the mock-up, I decided to pin where I wanted to take it in. And then what I'm doing is I'm just measuring where those pins are and I'm writing down what those measurements are. And then I am taking the exact measurements on either side. So I'm just using my quilting ruler to get a parallel line across. And then I'm taking that exact same measurement that I had on the other side and seeing if it matches up to the pin on the other side. And if it does, then great. If not, what I'm going to do is I'm going to then subtract that and kind of take the number, the average between them. So if I've got 0.5 on one side and say 0.4 on the other side, I'm going to blend that. It's going to be 0.9 divided by two. So then you've got 0.45, if that makes any sense. And so once I have done that and I've drawn that on, now I know the exact numbers that I'm going to take off based on the pattern. And yes, I did not trace this out. I'm terrible. I was actually making this dress to wear to my daughter's graduation. So I didn't have time to trace it out. I was doing it rather quickly. And uh, I just wrote on the pattern, I'll buy another pattern so that I can keep an uncut version of that as well. Uh, basically what I'm doing here is I'm just marking out all of those measurements, putting my quilting ruler, lining that up nice and straight so that I can put those pattern markings onto my existing pattern so that when I cut out the finished garment, it fits perfectly. And so once I've got those markings transferred on there, I am just going to use my French curve to draw in that shape. And I wanted a curved line just so that it makes a little bit of a softer line with it um, going in at the waist and out at the hips. And so once I've got that done, I am just going to trace that onto the back pattern piece as well because I want it to be the exact same on the front and the back. And these are mirror images. So once I've got that in, I am going to trim away the excess. Make sure you use your paper scissors. Never ever use those precious fabric scissors for cutting out paper patterns. And do the same on the back pattern piece as well. And I'm just transferring those notches as well so that I can match those notches up as I'm constructing the garment. Next, I've decided to lower my skirt about three inches or two and a half inches or so. And I am just doing that by folding it. And so I've marked how much I need to lift it up and I'm folding it. There is a marked line on the pattern where you're going to want to shorten and lengthen. And I'm going to tape this in place because I am cutting up this pattern in all sorts of ways. I don't need to revert it back to its original state. So I'm just going to tape it in place so that I know exactly where it needs to be for the hem. Now, the next thing that we are going to do on the pattern is I've decided on the back neckline to make it the shoulder piece just a little bit more narrow. It just looks a little bit better. I've got more narrow shoulders. So we also have to go in and on the facing, since it doesn't have a full lining, we need to adjust that as well. So we're going to adjust on the side of the facing as well as the neckline of the facing here. So you're just seeing how I am tracing that out. 
and adding in our notches as well as tracing out the area that I've cut out on that neckline just to narrow that up just a little bit more. And then we're going to cut that out on our facing pieces, making sure that we also clip those notches that are ever so important. That way everything will match up nicely. And here's the facing, oops, sorry, that was one of the front shoulder pieces, the first one there, apologies on that. This one here is the facing piece, but it's the same idea that we're going to match everything up to this original side piece, because you have a right and a left pattern piece. Now this is the front, this is what we're going to be gathering. And so this is our piece here and we just want to make sure everything lines up nicely especially when we've taken pieces off on the other pattern pieces we want to make sure that everything matches up perfectly so you've got your front um, piece as well as your back piece that lines up And now we're on to actually cutting the pattern in our fashion fabric. So I decided to use a stretch duchess satin. satin. I actually got this from fabric.com and it's in a blush color, which I thought was really quite flattering and really kind of picked up on some 60s vibes. Now I'm going to insert some tailor tacks for the markings. So if you're making a couture dress, you're always going to want to do tailor tacks as opposed to the uh, raceable pens that we use in a lot of the modern techniques. So you're going to create X's on them using long strands of single threaded thread on each of the pattern pieces. So any one of those dots, we're going to mark with thread through the pattern as well and then you're just going to pull the pattern piece through those threads so you've got lots of little tails hanging on looks like little spider webs but you flip it over to the right side and you will see that you've got a bunch of little x's all in your fabric next thing you're going to do is you're going to do a running stitch uh, going all the way along and you're going to trace out the line of each of those fish eye darts and so you're just going to pop that in place and you're going to do that for all of your pattern markings and notches that you would have and you make sure you do that on the other side as well just to finish up that dart and that's what we will follow to sew along this works really well especially when you are underlining with another fabrics because you want your fabric to take on another property this one is just a single layer of fabric so it's not too bad next we're going to pull out all of our x's that we have done with our tailor tacks and it'll really clean it up and so you can see quite nicely how you have our darts marked out nicely on there. Now for the quick method or the method that I usually use when I'm making something if it's not bridal or graduation. I use a water soluble marker or an air erase marker. I just pop the pins in the areas that I want to mark and then I put a little dot where they are and then I do the same thing on the other side after I've removed that first layer of pins. And then you can see that you've got all the markings on here. And then I'm just going to take one of my drafting rulers just because it's handy. And I'm going to draw in that fish eye dart. This is a much, much faster method. It is works, I find, just as well. That being said, like I'd mentioned before, if you're using something that you are underlining, I would never use this method. I would only use the tailor tacks. Being this is a single layer, this is completely fine to do. Next, I'm drawing in where the zipper is going to go. So you've got that overlap. And then I've also marked in on the bottom. So now we're actually going to sew the fisheye darts. So if you've never done that, before you are going to take the two ends and you are going to match up those two points that are parallel to each other and you're going to make sure that they match up on both sides so when you put one end of the pin through you want to make sure it pokes through and matches up to the other side 
on there and then you're just going to continue to follow your lines and i'm always checking on the back side just to make sure that my pins are following along that line and then you've got it all pinned we can take it over to our sewing machine and we can begin to sew first things first put your needle down so you don't actually want to be on the fabric when you're starting and then you're slowly going to go onto the fabric make sure you've got a decent length of thread tails at the end and then we're going to sew as we normally do following along the line taking out the pins as we go now at the end do not automatically cut your thread use the manual cutter and leave a nice long thread tail and then at the end of either side we are going to do a double or triple hand knot that we're going to tie both at the front and the bottom of where we had started the sewing this secures it and it also reduces the bulk so that it will lay flat this is the proper way to do a dart never ever ever backstitch a dart Next, we're going to press them and we're going to press them pointing towards the back and towards the center front. And so you notice what I'm doing is I'm actually warming up along the sides at the bottom of the dart before I'm actually pressing the dart. That's to get that end warmed up just a little bit so that it lies nice and flat and it's just very fluid and smooth as you're doing that. And don't forget to use an organza pressing cloth when using the top of your pressing. Next is a skirt kick pleat, and I'm doing everything with Hong Kong seams. So this is not in the pattern instructions, but if you want to do Hong Kong seams, I will guide you along the whole way. So first we're going to start with my Hong Kong seam strip. I'm using red strips because it is what I had left over from a Christmas dress, and I thought it looked quite nice with the blush pink as well. So you're just going to take one I've got, I believe, inch and a half or two inches long I think it's an inch and a half and I'm just going to be stitching that on using my regular seam allowance next I'm going to trim down both seams um, just on the inside of the one edge using my rotary cutter makes for fast work on that and then I am going to flip it over and then we're going to pop over to the iron and we're going to press it in place and so just press it down however far you want out and the reason we trim down the seams is to reduce the bulk and so i'm pressing it out so that i can see a little bit of that because i think it looks pretty and then we are going to pin in the ditch of where we're going to be stitching. Now, it doesn't really matter if it was one and a half or two inches wide. We just wanna make sure it's wider than where those pins are going or where that seam is. And then we're going to stitch in the ditch. And what that means is we're going to stitch in that center seam between our red fabric and our pink fabric so that it becomes virtually invisible. So I have pink thread in my top spool and in my bobbin I have red thread because on the opposite side I don't want it to be very visible. If you're doing Hong Kong seams with the exact same fabric, not to worry, you don't need to switch that up, but switching out a bobbin, much easier than switching out your top thread. So I thought that was a breeze. And now we've got some excess fabric on the back. That doesn't look so nice now, does it? And then what we're going to do is we are going to trim that off as well. So I'm just lining up my quilting ruler here. You can also use your regular shears to do that. And we're trimming it up so it looks quite nice. And then you can see when we flip it over how nice and neat that looks. And that is the inside of the dress. And now we are going to do the kick pleat. So we're just going to match up the notches here and pin that in place. And then we're going to stitch from the triple triangles to the dot. And you're going to want to back stitch here because it is incredibly important that this is secure because it's an area of a decent amount of tension as you're walking and moving. This is going to have a lot of stress put on it. So now that that's done, we're going to clip a notch in so that we can press out the middle seam there and give it a decent amount of steam on there. And 
once that is done, we are going to take our hand needle and we are going to hand baste with just a single needle and thread the kick pleat to the right side of the wrong side of the skirt. That way, when we flip it over, it will be exactly in the perfect position and then we can stitch going along the markings that we had already previously made. So we're going to pop that over to our sewing machine and being very careful to start right in the seam there, back stitch, and then back stitching at the end, because once again, this is a seam of great tension. And then we're gonna pull out those basting stitches and head on over to the bodice. So for the bodice, this is the inside piece of the bodice, and this is the outside piece of the bodice. And there are pleats going on the outside piece of the bodice. So what I'm doing here is I'm just pleating this to match up with the inside piece of the bodice here, because I need them to match up exactly. And then I'm double checking the measurement, it works. And then what we're going to do is we want to pin the other bodice. I like to do this on a dress form for the left side. And I tried a couple of different pleat designs, one going one way, one going the other way. And eventually I found the way that I thought suited this shape the best. Now you can do this without putting it on a dress form, but because these are larger pleats going across your shoulders and across your bust, I wanted to be able to manipulate the size of those pleats based on what would look good going over the bust of the bodice and every body shape is different. So putting it on a dress form similar to your body shape will really help you out in determining where you're going to place those pleats. That being said, you can do them all a uniform size and put that you know flat and stitch that in. I'm sure that that would be fine as well. Next, we are going to baste the ends and we're going to use just a regular stitch length and I am back tacking at the top and the bottom because I want to make sure that they don't come out and I want these pleats to stay exactly as they are. And we're just doing that to the other side as well. And once we've got that done, we are now going to put right sides together and we're going to join the front and the inside of the right bodice piece, so the shorter piece. And we are going to stitch along the top curve and along the neckline. So the one that goes under the arm and the one that goes along the neckline. We're going to leave the top open and the bottom open. Another thing to note is I'm not starting at the very top by the shoulder seam. I'm actually leaving a couple of inches there because we want to be able to stitch the shoulder seam later. So you notice I'm stopping here with a couple of inches to go. And that will allow me to be able to attach that in a later step. So don't forget to leave a couple of inches there. And you can go right to the ends on the other sides. So once that's done, we are going to flip it right side out and then we're going to give it a nice good press. And don't forget before you press to clip those curves. So you can see that I've clipped my curves here and we're going to flip it back to the wrong side. We want to press it beforehand because we want to get a nice crisp edge when we do our understitching. Do not skip your understitching. It is incredibly important to do your understitching. Number one, it keeps your garment in the same shape that it's meant to be and it's not going to overstretch. And number two, it ensures that your garment lays nicely and things don't roll where they shouldn't be rolling. So what I am doing here is I am just stitching with all of the seams facing towards the wrong side or like the facing side of it. And then I'm just stitching and top stitching close to the edge of that seam to hold all of that in place. Crucial step, please don't skip it. I know so many of you out there do. And when I first started, I did as well until I realized the difference it makes in the shape and the way a garment lays and the structure for many washes and wears to come. Next, I am just attaching this to the main part of the dress bodice along the front. So now that we will have two sides, a front, right, and a left. 
and we're just going to stitch on there. So you're just going to use your regular seam allowance and just stitch that in place. Don't forget to back stitch. And then when you end, you're just going to end right there. Now for our facing. So we've got a top and a bottom edge of the facing. And on the bottom edge of the facing, we are going to do some Hong Kong seams again. So rather than overlocking or surging it, what you could do, we are going to make it a little bit more fancy. So we're going to take that same one and a half inch bias binding strip. Do not cut on the straight of grain, especially with this facing because you do have curved pieces. You want to ensure that it's cut on the bias so that it curves nicely and when you fold it over, it lays nicely. Otherwise, you're going to see that through your garment. So just make sure you're cutting on a bias strip. If you have any questions on how to cut a bias strip, just let me know in the comment section down below and I will be sure to make a note of that and maybe make a video for you showing you how to cut some bias strips. So now that we've got that cut, we are going to roll the seam over and we're just going to pin in the ditch all the way along, exactly the same way as we did our skirt kick plate. And then we are going to stitch in the ditch. Also remembering to change that bobbin thread if you're using a different color for your binding here and stitch all along there. And now that doesn't look very nice and we're not going to use a rotary cutter. What we're going to do is we're going to use our shears and we're going to cut that away as close to the edge as we can get, keeping it quite nice and neat. And that way it looks absolutely beautiful when you flip it over. There you go. So now we've got our top and our bottom bodice. We are going to attach on our facing pieces. So on the front facing, we're just going to attach it along the edge here. And it's all pinned in place. Now we are going to stitch it in place. So off to the sewing machine we go. And we are going to stitch along these curved edges to make sure everything is all nice. Notice I am leaving a couple of inches of space at the tip of where the shoulder seams go. We do not want to go right up to the top. So don't forget that. Don't go straight up to the edge or you will be kicking yourself later on. And so this is our facing. And then you can see how that looks and it'll be folded out nicely. Then what we're going to do is we're going to understitch. Yes, don't skip this. Understitch on the facing side. We're going to press all of the seams towards the facing and then we are going to understitch close to the seam. I like to use that little clear guideline in my presser foot as the guideline that I'm working on. And now we're going to do some Hong Kong seams on our back facing pieces. So this is the back of our bodice of our dress. And we're just gonna pin it in place. By the end of this, you guys will be experts in making Hong Kong seams. And then we stitch it, cut it, and your bias binding and Hong Kong seams are all done. Now for the back pieces, because we don't have any gathers or rouching, we are going to have an exact match along our facing pieces. So we're just going to pin those curves, so that being the armhole edge. And we are going to stitch along there. We're also going to want to stitch along that back V shape that comes down. Also, do not forget to leave those couple inches at the top of each of the shoulder area. So you want to do that on both the front and the back pieces. And also, we are going to do some understitching as well on these pieces, you can't forget the back as well. You don't want that to drape out of shape. And especially because when you've got the V, it's cut on the bias and that is prone to stretching. So by understitching that, you are going to prevent some of that stretching from occurring. So we're going to press that nicely in place. Don't forget to clip the curves before you press that as well. And now we are going to do the shoulder seams. So 
That's why we left those couple of inches so we could attach them. So we're going to do the inside of the shoulder seam here and make sure to press out on either side. And then we're going to wrap it around and do the lining pieces and part of the facing on the other side um, so that we have those together. So once that's stitched, you're going to take it to the iron, you're going to press it, but then we have both the sides open. So what I'm doing here is I'm actually pinning that in place that way we can stitch the sides closed together. So I'm just matching up the edges so that they fit exactly together. And I've already done the one side. And then you're going to get out a needle and thread and you're going to hand stitch this. And we're going to create a nice invisible stitch going through the layers here. So what I'm doing is I'm going in horizontally along the edge of the one roll and then I'm going in right below that on the other side and this is called a ladder stitch as well if you wanted to look that up and if you'd like a more detailed tutorial on that just let me know in the comments down below and I'd be happy to do that and do it a little bit slower this kind of gives you a good idea on how to make that invisible stitch now adding in pockets so I will have a downloadable pocket template because this pattern does not come with pockets, but I say dresses should always have a nice pocket. Now what I would do if I made this again is I would insert a zipper into the pockets because they did gape when I did put things in. So you're going to attach the pockets right sides together, sew on it, and then I am just doing the side seams, fold out the edge of your facing, and you're going to stitch all along the side seam. So let me show you on the other side what I mean. So we've got the two edges of our facings and we are going to match the seam where the facing attaches to the main bodice of the dress. That is the main thing to match up. So you notice I am just lining that up now and I'm going to place a pin in that. I'm more concerned with that lining up than the edge of the facing pieces on the inside. And then I'm going to stitch all the way down, matching up both sides of my pockets and then pinning around the pocket as well and don't forget to match up all of your markings that you have and i'm going to then pop over to the sewing machine and we are just going to stitch this using our regular old seam allowance and when you get to the pocket you're going to stop pivot and then you're going to go around the perimeter of the pocket and this will create an inseam pocket that is completely seamless and you won't see it but if you attach that invisible zipper, like I men mentioned earlier, that would be more architecturally sound when making this dress because it is a tight fitting dress. And so once again, I wanted to show you the pockets here. Just going over and I'm doing uh, two layers of this with the pockets because we want to go and have the Hong Kong seams on here. So I am stitching on the one strip just around the one pocket. And I'm not doing any of the rest of the sides. And then, so now we've got the Hong Kong seams just around the pockets. I'm going to snip the seam between the pocket and the side seams. And then we can individually attach those Hong Kong seams on the edge of each of our side seams. So how we go about doing that is we place our strips right sides together. I'm just placing that down, pinning it in place. And then we're going to pop on over to the sewing machine. We are going to stitch that in place and do it exactly the same way as we had done our Hong Kong seams on all the other seams that we've done on this dress so far. So you can see I've stitched them both together. Then we're going to stitch in the ditch. And you notice it's only along the seam edge. So we're not catching any other fabric and we're not stitching them together. We want them to be open. Now for the back zip, and this was also a hack I did. Instead of a lapped zip, I am doing an exposed zipper. So here I am putting in a strip of organza. That's actually better than interfacing because it is more stable than most woven interfacings. And this will create a stability, especially because I do have a stretch fabric here so that my zipper won't tug and pull and it'll just look a lot nicer. Next, I am making some markings on how far out the zipper tape measure. So this is going to be individual to each one of your zippers. So 
I am just measuring. So I've got the line drawn where the original zipper would be in place. And I just have that pinned in place. But what I'm measuring is the width of one of those zipper teeth. So it'd be like half of the total zipper tooth because you have one on one side, one on the other side. And then I'm marking those measurements with my pen so that you can see how much more we're going to go up. And then I'm just pinning along here and I'm going to create this offset. So you can see that we're going up slightly to match for that. And then that's where our regular seam is. So you've got your regular seam and then you're going to offset going up and to the side because that's where those exposed zipper teeth are going to be. And then you just continue those markings. Next, we are going to take it to the sewing machine and I'm just double checking with my seam gauge here where my needle is going to go down for that offset because I want to make sure it's incredibly precise, especially at the top. You want to make sure these seams match exactly because you are going to have the top of your zipper up here. And then I'm just stitching along that line, going all the way down on the zipper and we've got all the layers together. So we've got our two fabric layers and our two organza layers. We're going down onto the offset. I'm doing a back stitch along here because that is a point of tension. And then I'm going to continue down on the regular stitch. And I'm just going to the triple uh, dots. That's where we'd have the kick pleat before. So it's just matching up to the same stitching that I had done for the kick pleat. And then next, I am just measuring out a cross hatch because this is where we are going to cut it out because this is going to enable us to do the box seam in the zipper. So next, what I am going to do is I am going to thread baste the opening of our the sides of here going all the way down on both sides. I want this to stay in place and I have pressed it. It's incredibly important to press this open and to get a nice crisp seam because what we're going to be doing in the next step is we're going to pop out our seam ripper and we're going to take out the seam we had just sewn. So make sure in the previous step you don't backstitch. I used a regular seam length or stitch length. I didn't do a longer stitch length because I just wanted it to be nice and precise when I pressed it. But then I'm just going to take this out going all the way to the bottom. And then this will give us a good area of where we're going to line the zipper up. So next we're going to pop in our zipper. We're going to line the top of the zipper up to the top of the V. So where that seam comes in before it rolls, we want the very top to come up here and I'm going to pin that in place. And then I'm just going to pin along here And then this is going to give us our placement. And really this pinning is most important at the bottom here. So I'm putting in some extra pins at the bottom because what we are going to be sewing is not the zipper in itself, just the bottom portion of the zipper. So we're gonna flip it up. So as I'm flipping it up and you see how we have those ducktails that are coming out, that little box right there. We're gonna pin that just through the zipper and the top here. Don't catch any of the other fabric pin that in place and then we're going to stitch going down there and that's going to create the box for our exposed zipper at the very bottom so you can see how that looks quite nice and the zipper is all pinned in place but how the heck do we sew the zipper in when it's pinned like that it's kind of difficult so I'm actually taking out the pins and I am just hand basting just the one side of the zipper so not through to the other side because we don't want to have any seams showing because you'll see the stitches if we had it pinned the way we did and so what and so what i'm doing here is going through one layer of fabric on the dress now this is one method of doing it another method is we go by where the fold line was when we had pressed that out and then we just pin the fold line on top of the zipper teeth, teeth right in the middle. Now, this is a much faster method. And in my experience, both methods work quite well. So I'm more inclined to do the quicker method than hand basting everything in place and then stitching it in.
And so here, because we are stitching so close to the zipper teeth, I'm not able to put my needle down and then push the slider through. So I actually have to back stitch here, lift it up, slide it through, and then go in and stitch up to the top. And so one of the things that you want to be cognizant of is folding over the edge of that zipper tape so that you don't have any raw edges showing. Don't forget to backstitch at the top as well. And then when we had started the zipper, we didn't start at the very bottom. So I'm just flipping my zipper foot to the opposite side so that I can go in and finish at the bottom and get right down to the corner where we had stitched before. And I'm just folding the rest of the dress out of the way while I do this. And now you have the one side of your zipper stitched. And then you're going to do the exact same thing to the other side of the zipper. So you can see I am looking at where I have the fabric folded from where we had pressed and I'm matching it up exactly along the sides of the zipper teeth because that is where we are going to want to stitch. And I'm placing the pins on the side that the zipper is on but I'm working with my dress facing up towards me so that I can match up that zipper. And then we're going to stitch that in the exact same way that we had stitched the other side. So just coming into it. And this one is coming where I'm going down so we can actually go right to the bottom on this one. We don't have to flip around like we did on the other side. Don't forget to back stitch. Once again, point of tension. And the zipper is all done and I finished that with a Hong Kong seam on the edge of the zippers and I since I've done it a lot I figured I wouldn't show you in this but what I'm doing here is I'm tacking down the facing to the inside of the zipper here so that it lies nice and flat along the back so one of the important things when you do have a facing is to tack it down in strategic areas to ensure that facing stays down another area to tack it down is the shoulder seams and so just lay that nice and flat. And then I am just stitching through the facing and the seam allowances that are pushed out that we had sewn the Hong Kong seams on. That way, nothing is going onto the dress. Now onto the hem. So we're on the home stretch here. So headed down to the hem here. I have decided to do the Hong Kong seam finish as well along the hem. That's something you could skip if you wanted to. I wanted that design detail in place as well because I thought it looked nice. It does add a little bit of extra bulk in it. So if you want more of a floaty seam, I would suggest going against that. Or if you have a lighter fabric, I would not do a Hong Kong seam finish on the ends here. And that's not completely done because we're going to flip it up again. So essentially you would have quite a few layers of fabric in that hem. If you had a thicker, really thick fabric, or if you had a really thin fabric, it would show through. So just be aware of the drape of that fabric. And so I am doing a blind hem stitch on this. So that means I'm going to fold it up the amount that I want my hem to be. So I'm just measuring that, pressing it with some steam, and then I'm pinning it in place. And these are going to be some temporary pins because if you've ever done a blind hem stitch, you will know that you need to fold the fabric one more time. So once you're done pinning and folding all of this in place, then you're going to fold it one more time. So you're going to fold it back on itself. So you flip it over and then fold it back. So if you can see right here and then Essentially, we will be stitching along our red line here. And I'm just pinning it. And these are the pins that we're going to keep in place as we are stitching. And I am following the edge of our Hong Kong seam finish because I want that to kind of like pop up and create a nice little finish on the end of this. And so just keep on pinning till you get right to the end. And make sure that this hem is nice and even. And that's what it looks like from the other side. I am going to pull out those temporary pins because they are on the back side and they will break a needle if we stitch into them. 
So next we are going to change our presser foot. Mine happens to be an R presser foot for Baby Lock Soprano. Um, and I'm just switching that. And that's basically your blind hem foot. So it's basically a foot with a little metal piece going down the middle. And that will be your guide that goes along the fold. I'm gonna switch our stitch selection to a blind hem. And then we're going to line it up. And I thought that by keeping that Hong Kong finish, it would be very easy for you to see where the fold was on this fabric, as opposed to if it was both pink. So you can see where I have the edge of that presser foot going along the edge of the pink. And we're stitching most of the stitches along the one side. And once it'll pop over to the other side. And now onto the bows. So for this, we are going to take a long tube and we are going to stitch on it and leave an opening in the middle and we're going to clip the corners because that will make it a more crisp corner and then we're going to flip it right side out and once this is flipped right side out we're going to pop it over to our iron and we are going to get that pressed because we need it to be nice and crisp and once that is done, we are going to then take the opening and we're going to use a ladder stitch and we are going to close that invisibly. And now that that is done, we are going to fold this in half and then we're going to measure four inches from the end. And I'm going to mark that with a pin. And so I'm just doing it up almost as if I was sewing. And we're going to stitch down that line. Doesn't look like a bow, does it? But it will. So now we are going to fold it out and we're going to make sure that these two pieces are right in the middle. We're going to place that over the stitching we had just done. And then we're going to pin that in place. And I'm going to pin on either side and then I'm going to pop it over to the machine and stitch right down that seam. So that is what that looks like, and it's starting to form our bow. So the next thing we're going to do is we want to gather it up. Now you can take a needle and thread and you can go through and gather it, but you know what I found to be much easier? Taking a piece of yarn and wrapping it around after I hand pleat it, because I find when I hand pleat my bows, they turn out nicer than when I try to do that gathering stitch, especially when there is so much fabric in place. And then I can manipulate it a little bit and then I will tie my bow just a little tighter with my yarn and I actually keep my yarn on there. I don't even take it off. I will trim the ends at the end, but it holds so nicely and it's a little trick that I like to use. So the next thing is going to be the middle covering of our bow. We got to cover up that yarn. So you're going to take this tube and just like you would with any other tube, you're gonna stitch along the long end and then turn it out through the short ends. And so what I found helpful is I pressed it first and then I flipped it right side out. And to make it a little easier, you could use a safety pin, attach a safety pin to one end and then push it through. It'll go much faster than what you're seeing here, me doing it with my fingers. I just didn't have a safety pin handy at the moment. And once that is done, you are going to press it again, and then you're going to fold it over top of the bow. And now you've got the shoulder bow. And then to attach that on, I'm going to hold it tight along the back side, and then I'm going to get a needle and thread, and I'm just going to stitch that, and I'm actually going to do a couple of stitches into the bow, and then I'm gonna continue along the side, and then clip off the edges, and we've got our bow. Next, we're going to attach our bow onto the dress form. So I like to place it on the dress form to know exactly how it's going to sit and how I'm going to attach it. In the pattern, you just attach it in the middle. That doesn't lay very nice and it doesn't look as flattering. So what I'm doing here is I'm tacking it down with some pins in certain areas and where I would like to tack it down with a needle and thread. And so when I take it off the dress form, then I am going to stitch in the middle of the bow because that's the most important place for it to be attached to the dress. So we're going to go over in a square box just around the entire edge of the middle of that bow, just along the tie there. But then once that's done, 
I am going to take my needle and thread and I am going to go down further on the bow along the shoulders. So as it comes down at the front of the bodice and on your back, I am going to do a little running stitch on the inside where I'm just going to tack it down just gently. So it's like there's not even a stitch there, but it's holding it down, giving it the shape that I want it to have. And really with that fabric manipulation, it's one of the things that I really enjoy about sewing is you can really change the way in which a garment lays just with a needle and thread and the way in which you tack the stitches down. It's absolutely a beautiful thing. And I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And there you have it, a 1960s sheath dress with some really cute bow details on the shoulders. If you'd like to see any other vintage styles, please let me know in the description down below and I'm happy to test out those patterns or even to draft up some new ones if you have some neat ideas. If you like this video, don't forget to show it some love and smash that like button. And if you haven't done so already, please consider subscribing to my channel. Until next time makers, let's get our sewspiration on. Bum, 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 ba -da, ba -da, bum, bum, bum.